Now that we've processed our uh, fuel wood, now we're gonna have to start a fire in the stove. Now the technique that I have here is a technique that I've learned and developed over the years that I've found to get the, a fast warming drying fire, the quickest with the least amount of effort possible, and that works really, really well. Now a lot of people feel that you uh, should put a layer of sand in the bottom of your stove to keep it from burning out. I have never done that with any of my dog model stoves. The other th the reason for doing that, when it's extremely cold, people say it insulates your fire and helps it burn better. What I found, I do what they call the Swedish fire lay. What's the Swedish fire lay? I'll take three sticks of wood and I'll lay them in the bottom of my stove first. And by doing that, I help insulate the wood. Also, it helps me create a good bed of coals more rapidly than any other method I've found. And I've never had any problem lighting a stove in the cold weather or had any problems with any stove burning out. In the 23 years I've had my stoves, I have not had one yet, someone told me, has burned out on the bottom. Now I find for building your first fire, an extra five minutes of preparation will get you a warm and drying fire within five to 10 minutes compared to 20 to 30 minutes because you tried to make too many shortcuts. So as you can see here, I start with my kindling. Kindling is only fuel that'll ignite within five seconds with a match. Then I have my pencil size wood. I've got my uh, three quarter inch to one inch size. Then I have my one and a half to two inch size. Now I'll start to make my fire lay. As you can see here, I lay these three pieces of wood to the bottom fingers width apart in the bottom of my firebox. Okay, then I'll put I'll shift this next layer, oh, about 10 degrees over to the left. And then I'll put another layer to the right. The reason I do that, the wood is close enough to give heat to each other, but far enough apart to where it allow the oxygen to go around the wood. Next, I'll put my grass. I'm using nice dry grass here. You could use birch bark, you use newspaper. I prefer to harvest from Mother Nature the natural materials that are available for me to use. Thus, truly leaving no trace on my total environment, not just where I'm at. Now I'll put that right about here. Then I'll take my finer, my very fine pencil size wood. I want to make sure my tinder is close enough to the front to where it's to draw heat across all my tinder. I'll put some more, a little larger. Make sure my damper is open. With the damper, when your damper is running vertically, you know it's open. Now I'll shut my door. As you can hear now, do you hear that starting to go? If I have too much air coming in at once, it'll cause the fire to go out. By shutting it a little bit to create a vacuum, I have a much better chance of getting a good hot fire rapidly. So I find if you leave it open a half inch, or as I see here, I'll leave it open. Um, just let the handle rest against the door latch. Now we just kind of wait, let the fire take, because if we put too much fuel on too soon, we'll just damper the fire down. Uh, it's starting to go pretty good now. See there, you can see how that baffle makes such a difference. You don't have that direct flame going up your chimney. The nice thing by using this technique, as these pieces burn up and start to fall in between the, the three foundation pieces of wood, those will start to burn, make you a good bed of ash on the bottom, and create a good bed of coals for your fire. You have three types of smoke. You have 
white smoke, which is water vapor. You have a bluish gray smoke, which is unburnt gases, and you have no smoke. No smoke is your most efficient burn. White smoke is normal when you put new fuel on a fire. Bluish gray smoke means that you are burning an inefficient burn, you're gonna have creosote problems, and you're actually burning more fuel than you need to get the same amount of heat. That's energy going up the chimney. When you wanna add new wood to your fire, the one thing you wanna do, you always wanna make sure you rake your coals forward before you add your new wood. The reason you do that is because you want that heat to take and make that new wood and get all the moisture off before it becomes fuel. Looks like water's ready for soup.